station working for you. This is WRTV News at 11, streaming now. It is the most important election of my lifetime. 11 days left to cast your ballot by mail or in person. Good evening to you at 11 o'clock. I'm Mark Mullins. Local organizations are working hard to make sure every Hoosier can cast their ballot either early or on election day. Tonight, WRTV's Cameron Riddle introduces you to a group providing free rides to the polls. Souls to the Polls was born out of fear in light of what the federal government was doing from the top down about mail-in ballots, uh, actually dismantling machines. With the election still looming, several churches, city county councilors, and the Indianapolis Urban League banded together to create Souls to the Polls, a shuttle service that transports Marion County residents from a church near their home to the city county building to vote early and in person. Dr. Clyde Posley says the majority of the people they are driving to the polls originally had plans mm -hmm. to vote by mail. They don't trust the process. That it was ever tampered with at all has, has sent shockwaves and fear through most of the people uh, who traditionally, that I know, who traditionally use mail-in voting. Souls to the Polls has already transported hundreds of Hoosiers to vote in the first two weeks of October. Lakeisha Brown has been driving one of the nine shuttle buses and says passengers are happy with how easy it is to go vote. The convenience of being picked up right there in their neighborhood um, and not having to deal with uh, parking. 22-year-old Jakaria Posley has already taken advantage of the free rides. <laughs> she says not getting her vote counted is not an option this year. You can't just sit here and watch everything happen and not feel some type of urge to go vote. With so much on the line, Tracy Boyd says the churches are working overtime to overcome any excuse that would keep any soul from the polls. We've eliminated parking. We've eliminated challenges of gas or car trouble. We sanitize the buses before and after each ride. We've provided snacks. There's a bus monitor. Cameron Riddle, WRTV. Souls to the Polls is running every Saturday and Sunday. The number to call to catch a ride is 317-821-7539, or you can call 802-951-4157. You can find those numbers at WRTV.com. Souls to the Polls is also offering rides to the Marion County early voting sites that open for the first time tomorrow. Those locations at Cranert Park Community Center, Lawrence Township Education and Community Center, Perry Township Government Center, St. Luke's United Methodist Church, and Warren Township Government Center. They're each open to voters from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. tomorrow and Sunday. Weekday hours at those sites are 11 to 7. You can still vote early at the City County Building every day leading up to Election Day. Starting Monday, extra steps will be taken to make sure absentee ballots across the Hoosier State are delivered on time. Today, the Greater Indiana Postal Service uh, said that officials are taking extraordinary measures to make sure your vote counts. The district manager says the Postal Service is well equipped to handle increases in volume and election mail is getting priority treatment. All hands on deck, extra trips, extra collections, whatever it takes to make sure that we get the voters ballots home, we're taking those necessary steps. With the machinery and the employees that we have now, we are absolutely capable of handling this volume. We are not even close to exceeding our capacity. The Postal Service is making one request. Voters are asked to mail completed absentee ballots as soon as possible. They must be delivered to election officials by noon on Election Day. Now to the forecast here on a Friday. Storms have moved on and a big cool down has moved in. WRTV Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory is helping you prepare for the weekend. Kevin. And prepare by grabbing a jacket, right? Temperatures cool all weekend long and you'll see the pattern in the seven day forecast. The rain is ending. There may be still some very light showers out there, but certainly any thunderstorms long gone. It stays windy and it's now a cold wind across central Indiana. Temperatures during the day tomorrow uh, will respond very very little to some sunshine. There's the dry radar just to confirm what we talked about. 20 to 25 degrees colder than 24 hours ago. Temperature sits at 50 in Muncie while it's 44 in Bloomington. And if skies were clear and the air weren't as uh, moist, temperatures would be even cooler. But we'll go down to about 42 tomorrow morning. Uh, temperature by 1 o'clock in the afternoon pushing 50. The lower 50 is about the best we can do. We'll talk about our next opportunity for widespread rain. We won't have to wait that long. Details ahead. 
The COVID-19 positivity rate in Indiana is now at 13%. That's the seven-day rate among unique individuals. That percentage has steadily climbed in recent days. 2,519 new positive cases were reported between Tuesday and yesterday, and 3,858 deaths across the state are blamed on COVID since the start of the pandemic. Earlier this week, the State Department of Health said 58% of those who died were in long-term care facilities. Some families say finding a facility that will accept their loved one with COVID-19 has been a frustrating and difficult process. Tracy Pelton's 92-year-old mother, Dolores, had a stroke in September and needed rehab and therapy. Dolores went to the Barrington, a long-term care facility in Carmel. Tracy was concerned when the facility emailed her that staff members had tested positive in Dolores's unit. The Barrington tested Dolores, and while the results were pending, Dolores's feeding tube got blocked and she had to go to the hospital. But Tracy hit a roadblock as her mom got better. The facility where Dolores likely got the virus wasn't able to accept her. WRTV Investigates reached out to the Barrington, who told us they do accept COVID-19 patients, but only if a bed is available in their active COVID-19 unit. That's been the biggest problem. Nobody will take her. I spent the last three and a half days calling everyone in the state, trying to find some place for my mother to go. Our goal is to get her healthy enough to come back home. The Barrington could not comment on individual circumstances, but told us, quote, from the onset of the pandemic, we have worked diligently to keep our residents, their families and other stakeholders well informed, often exceeding the reporting and communication requirements of the Indiana State Department of Health and other regulatory agencies. State records show Barrington has 13 staff members test positive and 11 positive cases among residents. WRTV investigates connected Tracy with several resources to help her find a long term place to take care of her. Her mom. Here are some resources for you if you are having issues surrounding nursing homes. You can call or email the State Department of Health at familyoutreach at isdh.in.gov or complaints at isdh.in.gov. The number is 317-233-7176. The Indiana Healthcare Association and Leading Age, which represent nursing homes and other resources. You can also reach out to the state's long-term care ombudsman and AARP Indiana. If you're considering becoming a police officer, Kokomo officials hope you'll consider their department. The mayor recently released a recruiting commercial saying he's working to get Kokomo PD up to appropriate staffing levels. He also wants to increase officer pay by 20% over the next few years. The police chief says the changes will benefit the department, which will benefit the community. And officers say the job on its own, it's its own reward. What the community is going to see is better response time. Um, with an increase in morale of the officers comes an improved uh, quality of service. It's not tough being a policeman, okay? When, when, you're, when you're born with a servant's heart, when, when regardless of what's going on, it doesn't matter what kind of vo vo volcanoes that's going off, you have a servant's heart. You want to serve. You want to protect, you know? The mayor says the city budget covers 14 officer salaries. Grants will pay for an additional 10 officers. If you're interested in applying, go to WRTV.com and click on this story. Today, Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogsett signed a proposal that will give citizens a bigger voice when it comes to IMPD policies and procedures. Proposal 237 adds four civilians to the General Orders Board, which is currently made up of three members of law enforcement. The City County Council approved the proposal last week by a 19 to 6 vote. Two of the civilians will be chosen by the council and two by the mayor. WRTV is working to learn what that selection process will involve. An investigation into a racist incident at Brown County High School has led to the suspension of a staff member. We told you last week a page of the school's yearbook identified a black student as, quote, black guy. Officials with Brown County School say they believe the content was created by the yearbook faculty advisor. No students were involved. The advisor will no longer serve in that role and he is suspended without pay for two weeks. District leaders say they continue to have meaningful conversations with students, families and members of the community to make sure something like this never happens again. A new art gallery inspired in part by calls for racial justice opened recently in Indianapolis near Keystone and 52nd. 76 trillion years of soul features pieces focused on the black experience. And one of the gallery's organizers tells WRTV he wants people to feel something when they view the art. You're seeing quotes and you're seeing pictures and you're seeing sayings and rap lyrics. Uh, you know, it just feels like something that's for us. And it's not just for 
black people by any means. I think it's for everybody. To check out this art gallery, you can send a message on social media to set up a private showing. The creative arts industry is among the many industries struggling to stay afloat during these tough times, but performers are not calling it quits. Tonight, the Arts Council of Indianapolis hosted a virtual fundraiser. Council President and CEO Julie Goodman says the arts and cultural institutions contribute to the community in many ways. Before the pandemic, um, Indie Arts and Culture was contributing $440 million annually in economic impact. Um, we represent 30,000 jobs in our community and we serve um, about 8 million residents and visitors every year. So it is significant in terms of our role as an employer, our role as a contributor to our economy, um, from an economic impact perspective and also just our, our quality of life and our civic identity. Money raised tonight will go toward grants to help local organizations. The, the fundraiser was about more than